works. If it doesn't work, then we're, oh, we're working, I guess. Hey, everybody, who's here? Oh, Dave's here. <laughs> Jose's here as well. Okay, so now, Martin, if you go over to the other browser, you should be able to see everybody's comments here as well, okay? Hey, guys, how's it going? Daniel, how's it going? Holy free holy. How's it going? Down. All right, let's go through these. I want to make sure everybody gets represented tonight. There's Jose. There's Daniel. There's Daniel again. There's Jose. There's all right. Jose. <laughs> through all these. No, I'm kidding. I'm going to do this. Yeah, turn the volume. You have to turn the volume off. Otherwise, you get feedback from me. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> hey, no worries. No worries. So, hey guys, thanks for joining us. I have put Martin's here, his link there, uh, right away. So please, guys, go visit his channel. This is Martin Extraordinaire. He has got a business for dumpster rentals that I've been excited to have him on. For a while now, this is going to be really exciting. Got a bunch of new questions as well to ask him. We got to learn more about him and him being an entrepreneur and his business as well. So he is uh, he's located up in Columbus, Ohio. So he's got some challenges in the wintertime for a dumpster rental that we're going to talk about later on. So this is going to be a good one, guys. So get your popcorn ready and let's have some fun tonight, okay, guys? And at any time, please share this. Make some comments on the side there, please, as well. Give it a big like. That'd be greatly appreciated. And ask Martin any questions that you guys want at any time. Okay, that'd be great. So, Martin, you ready for this? Let's go, man. Hey, guys, everybody, this is his first live stream. This is the best part. <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. All right. First live stream question for Martin is, when and why did you start as an entrepreneur? There we go. Uh, I started as an entrepreneur in uh, 2014, but really I've been an entrepreneur since I was a kid. Um, I was the kid, man, in my house uh, every season. In the, in the summertime, I was cutting grass, knocking on doors, like literally knocking, not scared, knocking on doors because I wanted to have some money in my pocket. In the fall time, I was raking leaves. In the winter, I was shoveling snow every year when I was a kid. So it kind of started as a kid. Um, being serious with entrepreneurship uh, when I really, you know, uh, wanted to go into business for myself and really be serious about it was uh, 2014. Had a really, really good job. I just finished college and stuff like that, man. So I thought I was, you know, I wanted to do, you know, I wanted to be a guy in a suit and stuff like that. But uh, so, yeah, so about about going on five or well, over little, almost five years now, I've been full time entrepreneur. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Good for you. So is this the name of your company right now is uh Kobe Dumpster Rentals. Kobe That's one of my companies. Kobe Bryant <laughs> by chance? Said uh yeah, yeah, yeah. So so Kobe uh Dumpster Rentals is named after uh my son, who's Kobe. And That's Kobe cool. is named after my favorite, the greatest basketball player of all time, uh Kobe Bryant. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. That's uh, that's that's really cool. That's really really cool. So, all right. So, how did you learn to be an entrepreneur? Ah oh, man, honestly, man, I guess I really learned through trial and error. Man, I think, I think, uh, as like I told you, as a kid, man, going out knocking on doors to to get people to pay me to do services for them, uh, it kind of just for one, it helped me to not you know uh, be shy away from rejection, you know, and just to when you take risk, I think I've been entrepreneur is really about taking risk and not sometimes it's not calculated risk. Uh, just taking taught me to take risk and uh, and just learn like, man, once you go out and take risk, man, and if you you persistent, man, you will get that business. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You got to be persistent. Being an entrepreneur, you got to be right. You got to be self-motivated. You got to yeah. get up every day. You got to get out there and, you know, take those risks. You're right. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Lots of fun. All right. So how did you come up with the idea for your business? Well, and this is a story I wrote in my, in my book as well. Uh, the way I even heard about the dumpster rental business, I was at a festival with my family. Well, it's like we have like every year we have, you know how you uh, have festivals in your city. It was called yeah. the Jazz Festival. And I met a guy who I actually still talk to. He's still in the dumpster rental business. And I just seen him with all these dumpsters lined up on wheels. And I, I just went up to him, man, and, you know, I asked him. And this was actually four years before I even really got serious about it. So it was probably 2012. 
And I was like, man, what is this? He said, I do dumpster rentals, man. They uh uh people call me, I drop dumpsters off, they fill it up. I pick it up and dump it. I don't do no work. It's just pick it up, drop it off, dump it. I'm like, I love the concept. I also love the rental concept. You know, I think uh, rent, anything like having the renting a house, renting dumpsters, renting some, you know, tools. I just think the rental business in general is a really good business because the cash flow is so continuous. And, you know, you can't go wrong buying one, a thing one time and you making money on it over and over again off that off of one in, initial investment with some yeah. upkeep. I totally agree with you. Totally, yeah. Rental's fantastic. There's actually another entrepreneur that uh, his name is Les. Hopefully, he's going to join us later on tonight. He's out west in Canada. I think he's in Calgary. I think, and that's what he does. He rents out like party supplies as Ooh, well. So, really good. yes, really, really interesting. Um, so, how do you advertise your business? How do you go about doing that? Well, of course, uh, the advertising for any business, especially if you're selling services and products. Of course, you got to be Google. That's number one. Um, but believe it or not, man, people don't understand. And I talk about this a lot on my YouTube channel. Uh, in the beginning, especially when it was free more so, uh, I use I utilize Craigslist. I don't know what people have against Craigslist. I know they think people are going to get killed or something. But, man, I met, man, I got so much business off of Craigslist, man. Like, I'm serious. Man. I'm talking about I, I, I still get a lot of I probably get about at least three calls a day off Craigslist alone. You know, and that's huge. I don't, I'm, I'm the only person who really even advertised in my city on it. And uh, yeah, man, people call me from Craigslist every day. So Craigslist, Google my website. Yeah, stuff like that for the most part. OK, so. You're getting off a of Craigslist. You're getting three inquiries a day. How many of those will you close? I'll probably close. Hmm, it, it, it varies. About 50%, I'll say, just to be on average. I probably do average at least, if you average it out, Monday through Saturday, one dumpster a day. So six dumpsters a week or more. But let's just say six dumpsters a week off Craigslist. That's closed customers. Uh, you know, $5 per ad, $5 a day per ad. So twenty five dollars a week can net me anywhere from, you know, almost fifteen hundred dollars. That's a really good ROI. <laughs> That's a great ROI. Are you kidding me? All right. So Life Ladder's got a quick question: SEO or paid ads? Oh, um, paid ads starting out because it will take a little bit. If you know what you're doing, I suggest. I always try to tell people, especially when I'm uh, when I do when I'm writing my I'm writing my other book. Uh, I, Try to get as much knowledge as possible, but pay uh, pay per click is just real easy. I mean, and it's, it's very inexpensive and people will click on it and you only get charged for what people click on. And, and if you're not a close and close deals, then, you know, pay per click. But of course, get the SEO going. It'll take a little while to get that going, but get it started. Hire a company or just read, read and learn how to do it yourself, because in the long run, it'll be better to get that organic uh, growth where it's, you know, it's more so as you're not paying for, for yeah. those. Good point. Good point. And Daniel said here that a Craigslist used to be good, but they aren't, they start charging uh mm -hmm. pay per click to uh, post ads and whatnot, or people to, sorry, people to uh, post the ads. So I love that. I love that better because uh, they started it about, I think last, last March. And I knew I was like, man, it's an opportunity. It, and it's only $5. So I looked at it like, I knew that people weren't going to want to use it, but I'm going to tell you if 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 you're doing whatever service or something you, you were, you know, previously uh, posting on Craigslist. And if you don't see as much of it going on Craigslist, just take a do do one out a day, five dollars a day and see how it worked for a week. But uh, man, that it, it kind of dwindled out every other person in my particular industry from posting. And I just flooded it. You know, I was doing if I see somebody posting. I'm not trying to be a, a monopoly, but if I see somebody posting dumpster rentals, one ad, I'll I'll pay for like four ads in one day, man, just to shut them up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Marketing, so, man, you gotta pay. For it. <laughs> so, hey, I, I don't really mind it. So just, but it's all up to you if you want to put the money elsewhere. That's fine too. Yeah, but hey, if it's a proven model for you for advertising, I mean, go with it. It sounds fantastic. That sounds great. Good for you. Good for you. All right, Dave, here we go. <laughs> Let's get Dave wound up tonight. 
Craigslist is great, but it's gotten worse over the years. I think a lot of people went to Facebook and now they hate Facebook. <laughs> has, has any, have you had any success on Facebook? Uh, not, not necessarily. So one thing I do use Facebook for, and I don't talk much about this yet on my channel, but I use Facebook. I think Facebook marketplace from what I saw is one of the best places to resell items. I don't know why, maybe because people are on Facebook more so than go Craigslist and it's more convenient uh, for people to go on marketplace, Facebook marketplace or, or Facebook ads uh, to do Facebook ads. But I really didn't have much success uh you know i probably was doing 25 dollars a day in facebook advertising and i just wasn't getting the results i kind of i was probably doing like one person one one customer a week from that so really yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. i don't know why craigslist just worked just worked better for me in the beginning especially that's for your market has yeah. anybody here in the stream that's watching post a comment has anybody had success with facebook ads <laughs> anybody <laughs> like I don't know. I don't. Very few. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure Facebook uh, marketing is really, really good for. I guess digital uh, marketing. I, I, you know, click funnels and uh, it just. I, I feel like it works for different markets. You know. Yeah, it must. It's still around. It must work for someone or some companies for some industries. You're right. You're yeah, right. Absolutely. So, all right. Next question. What do you attribute to your success? First of all, God, man. Um, uh, I got to give him all the glory, man. That's just me from my heart. Uh, I believe without him, man, cool. like I wouldn't, I wouldn't even had wanted to have the mindset to do that. And of course, just my family. And I think uh, just my hunger to want to continue to learn, you know, I want to just continue to learn, man. Like, you know, I'm all, I love YouTube so much, man. Like I know y'all love YouTube too, but like, I just always, I'm always just interested in just learning new things, uh, seeing what people are doing, seeing new things coming to market, just understanding things and just getting information about new things. So just continual learning uh, would be like the last point of that. Yeah. So getting back to the Facebook ads, Jose says, nope, hasn't tried it. Uh, Dave says, Facebook sucks. Uh, yep. <laughs> and then yeah. Daniel says, I haven't tried it yet either. So there you go. There's some answers for you on that one on the Facebooks. Um, what motivates you? What motivates me? I yeah. mean, my family. You know, I told you I have five kids, so <laughs> so that's a lot yeah. of motivation, man. I mean, just and, and of course, just being an entrepreneur. I mean, you kill what you eat. I love what uh, Et say. He say uh, he said um something very interesting. He said, you know, um, as an entrepreneur, when you hunting, you're a hunter. And so, if you a lion and that gazelle, if you entrepreneur, you not you not going nine to five looking for food. You're not on a nine to five watch as an entrepreneur. You on Gazelle. That's your clock. You know. So, I love the. I think the biggest motivation would be just knowing that you got to kill what you eat. And yeah. um, if you don't bring nothing back home, if you don't, you're not making any money. Then you're not gonna have a place to live. So, I believe that's a big motivation. That, and that's also a, a reason why people are getting in and and not being successful because they don't like that type of uh. <laughs> uncertainty <laughs> yeah yep i've seen that <laughs> absolutely let's get back to your business so i saw the video that you recently did about um branding your dumpsters yes came up with the logo where'd you get the logo done um i got that logo done on fiverr fiverr is incredible yeah. man that's one of the best places to go they did my uh proofreading my book covers my all my just anything like, you know, um, graphic designs for cheap prices. You can get pretty much anything on there now. So yeah, I use Fiverr uh, to put me up a great, uh, you know, um, yeah. logo. You know if anybody, everybody that's watching this like now or later on, um, Fiverr is great. It really is. It's amazing. Fiverr.com. I think it's what got two R's to it. F I. Yep. E R R dot com. If you like, they're all virtual assistants by the looks of it, and they'll just help you out do anything nowadays. It's, um, it's amazing, yeah. right? Cheap price. We'll get the job done really quick for you. So, yeah. so okay, hang on. We got Victor here. We we got Chris here as well. Sorry, Chris. I think I jumped my jumped over you here as well. Say hi to Victor. Hey, and Victor. Chris, here we go. Thrifty's Chris. There we go. Chris and I just recently found out that we live in the same city. 
So, okay, excellent. Hey, here we go. All right, so you get your logo done. You go into branding. Take us through this. Like th this, I think, would be great for other entrepreneurs. Uh -huh. So you you, you took that leap of like you know you didn't have any real branding or logo or anything like that. So mm -hmm. what? First of all, why did you do it? Secondly, you got it done through fire, which is great. And then thirdly, take us through the process of like you know what what where you are today with that and how you know what type of an ROI say you got from all this. Yeah, so I mean, honestly, man, it it all comes from man. I mean, we we all see it. No matter where we at, we all ride on highways or we're all out, you know, on the streets, and you see trucks everywhere you go with like logos and phone numbers, and I'll just always see that. I'm like, man, that's a opportunity, um, you know, to take. And I did I already had branding on there, but I just I just took it all off because I didn't like it. It just wasn't. Uh, I don't want to say sexy enough, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't what I wanted, man. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't, you know, the route I want to go. So uh, I just rebranded it. And the reason why is, man, when I'm riding down the street, that's marketing, you know, publicity. And, you know, it's, it's unlimited. I can't even tell you, you know, how many people I have got calls from people where it's parked at a customer's house. I get a lot of business when my dumpsters are parked at a customer house and their neighbors see it. They take a picture of my sign and and they'll end up calling me. Well, you know my neighbor just uh you just rented my 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 neighbor a dumpster. I just wanted to see if I can what your prices and stuff like that. So the ROI is just I can't really keep track of it if you will because it's so many people will will see it. Uh, but um, and Brand recognition good for you. Oh yeah, just just the recognition and putting brand awareness, putting myself out there and. Just giving people more avenues to find me, find my company. Yeah, definitely. How many dumpsters do you have now? I got 20 dumpsters. 20. I sold a few. Yeah, I sold a few. Uh, I got kind of, I want to have some that just wasn't up to par. And I knew a guy wanting to get into the business. So I sold a few of them just to kind of help out somebody. And also for me to um, utilize the money to get some more built up to my standard. And just so I can just make a bigger push. And uh, start to really just grow, but I kind of, you know, it's it's a balance, man. But I need I need more all the time. So I'll be really? really there's there's so much demand that you need to expand your uh, absolutely your yeah. Absolutely. Google's too much. I, I said it in my, one of my videos again. Like uh, if you do the pay per click with Google, man, you can get kind of overwhelmed, if, especially if you don't have a lot of dumpsters. And if I got twenty, those can go quick. So you know. Um, just constantly looking for them. How many trucks do you have? I just, I got two trucks now. And uh, my I had three of them. I had to get rid of it. It just was paying insurance for no reason. I never used it. And I wasn't hiring another person at the time. So just two for now. Uh, yeah. One, I got a backup just in case, you know. Yeah, stuff one, all your, <laughs> one of your more recent videos was, uh, it's always good that backup. One of your more recent ones you were saying about, you know, whether or not to hire employees and go down that road and whatnot. So, yeah, you got to keep us informed as to, uh, well, put it this way, how, what's your next step? Are you going to move forward on the employees? I'm just, uh, I'm thinking because I had employees, I had an employee and um, it takes a certain type of employee for this business. And I just feel um, I'm doing, I'm just doing, you know, I'm doing my due diligence. I need to get to a certain, once I get to about 40 dumpsters, I think that's when I'll be able to hire somebody else. But, but right now it's the way I got it set up, the way I schedule it. It's just easier. It's easy for me to do it. And I also have a family member who kind of helps me out. If something happened to me or anything like that, he's able to uh, make some drop offs for me as yeah. well. But uh, yeah, just for now, I, I feel like for, for this particular business and I'll make a video about this one day. I need to get a certain amount of dumpsters before it'll be, it'll be time to hire another person, you know, on, yeah. give them a fair amount of money. And a, a ni I want to give a nice, decent uh, package to somebody. So they want to stay and grow and help build the company with me instead of just being an employee making yeah. pennies. Good for you. Good for you. Hey, Ryan, how's it going? Thanks for joining us. Uh, Dave has got a quick question here for you. What's going on? Uh oh, would, it, would starting this business be easier in a small city or small town versus a big city like Denver? Uh, I mean, of course, with a smaller city, you, you got you don't have much people, but I believe this is something you can start anywhere. It's all about getting in with the right people. So I, I would say for a smaller city, it'll be easier if you can if you can market to say construction companies 
And you might, in smaller cities, from what I see, you might have to go to the outskirts because I'm pretty sure a small city, you're by a bigger, a bigger city. or So you might have to open up your territory with smaller cities. Uh, but it all depends on the, the, the demand. And I tell people who email me all the time, man, I always tell them, put a Craig's, a couple Craig, do a Craigslist uh, marketing campaign in your city uh, for about a few days and see if anybody uh, gives you calls and just do some some tests, some testing in your uh, market to kind of see, because it can kind of vary, man, uh, especially in small cities. You might already have dumpster rental companies who has it locked up. So yeah, do your, do your due diligence. But of course, a bigger city, man, more opportunity. So I would say a bigger city. Definitely, definitely. Uh, Ryan, I put Martin's link at the beginning to scroll up of all the comments and try to get right there at the very top for you, for anybody. Anybody that wants Martin's link, link, it's all there, okay, for his channel. <laughs> Just scroll way back up. So, hey, Canines Over Coffee, great to join uh, having you join us tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, Jose at Rico Suave says, Waste Management is looking for you. Look out. <laughs> I think I seen him. He, you had a video with Rico Suave, right? A, a stream. Yeah, he was my first guest. Yeah, yeah. What's going on, Rico Suave? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah. Hang on for one sec here. Okay, I think I think we're caught up with everybody. So again, anybody has any questions, just drop it down there by all means, please. Um, all right. Let's go back to what do you do to the business? So what do you do in the wintertime? I know you and I spoke about this. We're actually, everybody, we're together like talking at 7.30 tonight. We're talking for almost half an hour before we went live. So uh, kind of a few answers to these questions already. But Mars, I think his, uh, his business is so interesting. And what do you, so what, you know, living in Columbus, Ohio, what do you do when it snows and it freezes? Man, honestly, uh, it slows down, of course. I mean, because the snow and you got snow days and you got times where you can't go on the streets. So that's the only time when it snow. But honestly, man, um, the way I do it, I had I learned this a couple years ago, is to market to uh, house flippers, uh, realtors, and um, so really house flippers, realtors, and construction companies because it's for me that's their business all year round and they don't stop. So I kind of connect and get more, you know, I lower my prices a little bit to kind of fit the, just so I can get a lot of more business. But I, I kind of market to people who still doing flipping houses all year round to uh, investors and realtors who, who constantly need my services. So that's kind of how I beat that. But right. uh, it doesn't really slow down. It only slows down when it's just terrible outside, when it's like a ice, you know, or just kids don't have school. So, but it, it still is a challenge for a lot of people. People who don't do what I do, man. A lot of guys I know, they have to go into other businesses. They got, like I said, some of them got a, uh, you know, snowplow businesses and just, just do other things in the winter. Some guys shut down for the winter. You know, they save yeah. up everything from the hot months and just come back in the springtime. So, you know, for me, I just, I get with the people who still need my services all year round and just lock them in and um, <laughs> keep them, uh, Keep them coming to them. <laughs> All right. So a little trick of the trade here. What do you do when you wake up and you've had a big snowfall and it is freezing and you've got all your 20 dumpsters are all being, you know, being called upon? What do you do? Are you there shoveling out every dumpster? Well, if it's now, if it's terrible, the customer, nine out of 10, they probably won't because you want to be safe. You know, I don't want to be, you don't want to be driving dumpsters, you know, pulling trailers and, and just terrible terrible weather but yeah. um if it's i'm for some reason columbus man we got really really good um snow plowers they be they be on it fast so our streets get pretty uh cleared up pretty quick so nine times out of ten man i typically you know i get them all out to them but i will probably have to cut them in half because it takes a lot longer in the winter time when it's like a heavy heavy snow load because you got snow in the trailers and you got to shovel it out so people don't lose space so it's just, you know, got to just work around st certain things and, you know, try to be uh, wise about it. So what happens if it's already loaded up with garbage and you get like a freezing rain land on it and snow? What do you do then? And it doesn't uh, know when you go to the dump. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, if I don't pit, so if it, if I always look at the news, so I try to, in the wintertime, I always pay attention to the weather. And I kind of, we got weather people, they're kind of good on ice. They're not good on other uh, <laughs> things going on. <laughs> I kind of know when it's going to be an ice storm. So when I dump, when I drop off a dumpster, I just lay some salt down on the bottom of it. And uh, uh, that's you know, the trick. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, when it don't come out, you just 
you just got to take it to your yard and let it sit until it thaws. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I've, I've seen it where spring. it's it don't come out. So you got to take an L sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, you guys didn't wait. You guys said wait. So David Hidden Freedom Investing here. That's your question. I watched they look like trailers that you are calling dumpsters. So are those towable trailers you tow with a, a truck like a, a Ford F two, you know, two fifty or something? I, absolutely. So I don't have I don't go I didn't go the roll off route. I had roll offs prior to selling my first business, but with this one, I think it's just I don't know what it is about Ohio and like these type of cities, but we kind of like I said in some of my videos, we kind of revolutionized the uh, concept of the dumpsters on wheels. And they're not dump trailers, but we use a chain in the skid and we pull everything out. Right. And basically, for a person buying a dump trailer or for, or uh, a roll off, I can buy about four, four of these type of trailers and to their one. So it's a little better. It's a lot of, and more, a lot more inexpensive, and I'm still not touching the, the debris. So yeah, all my dumpsters have wheels. They're driveway friendly, and most customers here are used to these type of dumpsters, and they all, and they prefer them because they say roll off dumpsters messes messes up the driveway. So you know, um, it's a it's a give or take. But depending on where you at, I would I would suggest roll offs or uh, dump trailers because most dumps in in America or Canada don't have the pulley system where they'll pull everything out with using a chain and skid. So yeah. just kind of be mindful um, on that. Just check your area, check your local landfill, see if they uh, offer those services. So what do you enjoy most about being an entrepreneur? I mean, of course. About your business and whatnot. What do you enjoy the most about being an entrepreneur? I mean, of course, I, I enjoy the freedom. Um, you know, just the, just the freedom, man. Honestly, like, if I don't... Say if something come up, if I got to be somewhere, if I just want to leave at the drop of a dime, if I just want to go to Mexico for a couple of days, man, I can just oh, I have that option, you know, without being worried about getting fired. Now, I wouldn't suggest doing that um, starting out or if you don't have employees because you might might not satisfy customers who might be calling you, but just the freedom. And of course, man, there's no cap on your money, your income that you can earn. I think that's the best is just. I don't have, I'm not making $50,000 a year. I'm making whatever I want to make from my effort. And I think that's one of the best things about being an entrepreneur. Absolutely. I agree with you. The freedom. I mean, it's, it's what it's all about, right? Yeah, man. That's, yeah. that's why everybody want it. <laughs> yeah. Do whatever you want, when you want sort of thing. So, all right. So did you ever have a mentor? Like when you were younger or, you know, starting out your business, did you ever have one? Yeah, I had a couple mentors. Uh, never. I don't think they knew they were my mentors, um, but it wasn't ever a relationship. It wasn't ever like, I'm going to pay you a hundred dollars an hour to be my mentor. Yeah. It was just more so like people who I could just call on and, and they'll just give me good advice. They've been, they've been being the entrepreneur for years and they had just good things to tell me. So I kind of leaned on those type of people, but I never really had a, a entrepreneur where I actually had one-on-one -on -one coaching. I will be doing that soon, especially as I'm growing and I'm just, I want to, I need more just information about things, man. And so, yeah, so I had a, a lot of mentors over the year, even people yeah. who's not living anymore. They were my mentors. They just don't know that they're my mentors. <laughs> it's still alive. You ever get a chance, go and thank them. <laughs> I've, I've done that with people. So, Exactly. Uh, if you could give your 15 year old self one bit of advice, what would it be? I would tell my 15 year old self to believe, believing, believe in yourself fully. Um, just believe in yourself. I, I, you know, just coming from where I came from, I didn't really, um, I never seen people, uh, entrepreneurs that I knew, like who was really building big multi million dollar businesses. So a lot of times, if you never see it, um, it's hard to believe that it can come true for you. So I would just tell myself just to believe that you can you can build and you can become, you know, just anything that you want to become. You know, you got the tools for sure. Definitely. Definitely. All right. Dave's got another question for you. Uh, keep them coming. Can you see that? Uh, what's the what's the craziest thing you found in a dumpster when dumping? Wow. <laughs> I found so many. I'm just crazy. Your show. <laughs> Man, that's a hard one. I mean, the crazy—the uh, lady told me I had a customer 
<laughs> Jose, yeah. please. She, I don't want to freak nobody out, but she had like some dead cats in there. Ooh. She, she she let me know though. She was like, yeah, I didn't want to. I put them on last, so just be careful. Yeah, she had like some dead cats on the back of, <laughs> on the back of it. I mean, I found money. I found jewelry. I found designer bags. I mean, just really? everything you could think of, really, man. It's it's a crazy. Some stuff I felt guilty throwing away because I just had, didn't have time to go through it, uh, or I didn't have the space in my storage to keep it. But um, man, I, it's unlimited. But probably those dead cats, man. I was like, man, come on, man. I had a mouse. I had a few mouses in my. They was alive. They were just running around in there before. So I find all type of stuff, man. It's raccoons. So what do you do? Do you go through it quickly before you take it off to the dump, like to the landfill? Sorry, or I, I sometimes I used to a lot um, when I first started out, especially when I, you know, when you want to, because when I first started out, I was trying to just, I was, I was renting out my dumpsters. I wasn't spending no money. I just, I was like, I need to get more dumpsters. So I was saving all my profits, and I was trying to upsell. So I was going through my dumpsters, getting out all my scrap metal. I was getting out anything I could resell and I would just put my stuff I can resell in storage and stocking up metal just so I can buy more dumpsters. But as I grew more and I started getting more income, I fixed my credit. And so I can get better, you know, access, well, access to la to leverage my credit to get better stuff and get it faster. Um, I kind of stopped that a little bit, but yeah, it's a. Uh, so Ryan's got a question for you. I think he's asking like, have, have you ever found stuff that you could flip on eBay? Yeah, I, I never really went the eBay route. Uh, I, I typically just go like the Facebook market route, uh, Craigslist, offer up, let go. I mean, it was I, it's this is a crazy business, man. And if you guys just thinking about it, I almost had a customer. Uh, she paid me like four hundred dollars to remove a shed. And I was just joking, man. I, I had this shed. I took a picture of the shed. Right. It was a metal shed. It was in good shape. And I put it on. I think I put it on offer up. I had somebody call me within that same like 10 minutes or hit me back on there and they came in. I sold that to them for like two hundred dollars. Nice. So I made like six hundred dollars. I didn't even have to remove it. So, man, all the time. But uh, I'm just not an eBay. I, I never use eBay. I use other channels to uh, to flip, though. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Gil's here. Thanks a lot for joining us tonight. Thank you so very much. And uh, Les is here, too, as well. This is the gentleman I was saying that uh, he's got his rental business out west. Less oh, worry. Are you in Calgary or Edmonton? If you could write down, that'd be great. So you did a video while ago with the snow and whatnot that was going on. So uh, next question for you. Yes, sir. Let's see. Mm, books. Do you read a lot of books? Absolutely. Uh, Give me your top three. My top three, of course, Think and Grow Rich, uh, Four Hour Work Week. And the last one is, well, set, uh, seven habits of the highly successful, uh, se seven habits of highly effective people. I believe that's how I'll be getting that wrong all the time. That's a really, really good book. That changed my whole business. Uh, I got a lot more, man. But um, honestly, now what I do a lot, a lot of is audible. I'm more of a, uh, you know, an audio learner and a visual learner. Uh, I like to read, though. But I get, I think I learn better when um, I can just listen to it, making my uh, truck. Uh, my truck is like a university. I don't listen to no music in there. It's just constant stuff that's just feeding me knowledge and just motivation, inspiration uh, continually. That's beautiful. That's awesome. Hey, for everybody that's just uh, you know arrived, if you guys want to scroll all the way up to the very top, I uh, put Martin's link to his channel there. Okay, so please connect with them. That'd be great. So let's see here, Dave. Question Dave tonight, liking this. This is kind of like super chat, Dave, all over again. Can you? There you go. <laughs> okay. Can you buy the trailers and and kits? I know you can. I know you can build them, but do they sell kits and can be built by myself? Um. When you say kits, are you saying like uh I? I don't know about any kits. Um, but. I'm not. I'm not really understanding. So, what what type of kits? Can you re ask me? Or you just put it together, basically, and away you go. Maybe that idea. Is that correct, Dave? Is it like a template of how to build them? Like, that's what he mean by kits. Can you buy yeah, the maybe. kits? I think Dave's trying to put together his business in Denver. Okay. I mean, you can. Um, if you need, if if you're talking about like, do you need like a a blueprint or a template on how to build them? 
Uh, I know a guy who builds a mall in Ohio. He built thousands of uh, dumpsters in uh, Columbus. There you go. So, Dave, reach out, reach out to Martin afterwards. You can start putting your trainers together. Can I yeah. coffee? Just subscribe to Martin's channel. Fantastic. Thank you so much. That's you really cool. Thank you, K9. Here's another question. Dave, this is off the charts. Dave, tonight. How many trainers can you bring to a customer in one trip? Well, uh, of course, when it's just me, uh, one at a time. But I get, I have specials. I have two trailer specials where I do. When people, my biggest sizes are 15 yards, and I also offer 30 yards. So, but it's two 15 yards for the price of one 30 yard. So I tend to bring them if they need them two at a time. If it's like a quick job, I'll just bring one, and I bring a second one, or I'll just uh, bring the one and if and then come back and drop and dump it and bring the other one back. But uh, yeah, just one at a time. But uh, when I need two, I can bring two back to back to them. Cool. For the most part. Good to know. Victor, thanks for joining as well. Family now with Martin. Great to see. Great so, to Martin, do you ever plan upon, you know, sorry, do you ever plan to retire? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that's the ultimate goal. I mean, ah. I've been thinking about that a lot lately because I already sold, oh, I already sold one dumpster rental business for a great, great, more than what I what I spent on it, and uh, so I know that's possible. So, but I think before that, I still I, I can't just not do anything, man. Uh, I'm a, I'm gonna be have my hand in something, and I am I go more towards you know I do some Amazon. I've been dabbling in Amazon FBA, of course, uh, looking into Click Funnels and creating courses and books and stuff like that. That's something I want to do. So, so once I once I solidify and really get good in the online market and real estate like you, we got to talk as well. So once yeah. I can get really, really, really efficient in um, the online setting and um, real estate, then that's when I'll be looking to uh, for sure either sell or just uh, put a, you know, a person in charge of my dumpster rental business and just really build out a system. And, uh, you know, have it in place and even franchise it if, you know, if it get to that level. That's something I feel like doing. Great idea. Really good idea. Hey, Kevin, thanks a lot for joining us tonight. He just hey. showed up. Hey, how's it going? Here we say hi to Kevin. And uh, let's see what he says as well. Oh, as for less good, he's going to follow him as well. And what's this question over here? Connor, you change your, your avatar picture, Martin. It looks slick. <laughs> oh, man, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. <laughs> all right let's see describe yourself 10 years from now uh 10 years from now man i want i want my own plane i'm gonna have uh my own island <laughs> nice. oh yeah yeah but yeah just i try to dream big man but 10 years from now for sure you know like i said either if i'm still doing the dumpster rentals i want i want kobe dumpsters in every state even canada so if i can you know friend yeah. have it franchised out uh, just creating creating jobs for just thousands of people, and of course having like a big online presence, and um, just being a a person going around the country speaking and uplifting other people to uh, to really really push forward and live their dreams, man, and really just to believe in themselves that they can be an entrepreneur, mentorship, coaching, one on one, all that type of stuff. Nice. Absolutely, good for you, good for you, triple seven of course. Thanks for joining us. Really do appreciate it. I like that name. I think this is probably for you, Marty. You're four away from 850. Does that sound accurate? Oh, thanks. Well, I should have. I'm at. I was at like 755. So I'm. I'm not quite there yet, man. I'm just get well, that. It's somebody else then, perhaps. But still, oh, who knows? Maybe you re jumped up though this evening. Who knows? I, I was doing that though, oh. man. Soon, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully, Kevin's got a question. What would you name that island? <laughs> man what would i name that island i will probably name that island wow that's a good one the w <laughs> my last name woods i don't know that's the w island <laughs> this is my family man we can have our own uh our own what you call it metropolis whatever you call that land where it's just flowing with milk and honey so yeah probably the w probably <laughs> i love it love it victor here this point, running up to two digit courses to be released next month. You know, you gum road and pay hip. Okay, then. <laughs> nice. That's all. Let's Good see. Time. Let's see. That's a question there. Excellent. Okay. So, how do you plan upon growing your business? How are you going to scale it? 
odds marketing, man, marketing, marketing, marketing. And marketing can be scary when you know what you're doing, but you're not prepared for it. So I'm, I just, uh, I'm looking at scale now, man, and um, I know what to do, but I just, I just can't. I don't want. I've been overwhelmed before to get where I'm at now to get to this level. So uh, definitely, just creating more of an SEO uh, with a more organic reach, of course, and uh, you know, if not franchising, looking to get some partners in probably other cities and my. Uh, like Cleveland, I'm in Columbus, probably get somebody from Cleveland or Cincinnati. So I can do more regional before I want to see if it'll work outside of Ohio. So uh, just definitely uh, look into partner or franchise to some surrounding cities first and uh, see how it work and just find good people to, to help me run it and build it. Mentors, of course, who can give me the wisdom and knowledge I need to build, uh, build it into a multi-million dollar um, business so yeah it's gonna take a lot of work but um you'll do it <laughs> you'll do it you got the drive you'll do it oh yeah yeah, man. yeah. So, had a few failures along the way you know, oh, i sold my first business because I, I was overwhelmed <laughs> yeah overwhelmed man uh i mean every day i kind of struggle with just because you never know man especially if you if it's a day where say yesterday i got 10 dumpsters rent it out and today I get one you know uh that can be like man what am I doing wrong man like you know uh so I, I gotta deal with that every day but um yeah just some of the failures is having to sell my first one because I was just super overwhelmed man it was a not a good good time in my life for sure yeah not yeah. a problem huh? but I'm happy I got back up though <laughs> and have you learned from all your failures oh yeah absolutely absolutely I mean I, th I think if I wouldn't have failed I wouldn't have known what it was like to know that I can get back up. I mean, I think I, I'm the type of person, I guess I had to go through it, man, to really appreciate not going through it again because I'm knowing like, man, I know what that is, man, and I'm gonna take the steps. I'm not gonna be lazy. I'm not gonna be sloppy with this. I'm gonna do it right, no shortcuts, and just really truly learning from it and, and, and making it stronger and, and better. Yeah. So good. Absolutely. What do, you, what do you think has been your greatest achievement as an entrepreneur? My greatest achievement, I mean, still to this day, man. I mean, a couple of years ago, I did my taxes. I mean, getting over every, you know, every, every in America, the American dream for a lot of people was a hundred thousand dollars a year. So I think once I went to a hundred thousand, um, I just was like, man, I really made it. Even though I'm a lot more now, but Getting over that that first a hundred thousand, man, I was just like, man, I seen my tax return one hundred nineteen thousand. I was like, oh my goodness, man, Ooh, good for you, man. Yeah, so that was probably like till this day, man. Even no matter how high I get, man, it's so far that was like the happiest. Like I was like, man, I can really do this, man. Once I got to those six figures, but now that's like, okay, it's time to. It, it's a lot more out here for everybody, for all of us watching this, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, just keep going, keep growing, right? Absolutely. It's all about the growth. It's all about the growth. Um, so what are some of your mistakes that you did make that you wish you could have avoided? Um, I think uh, one of the one of the biggest is, of course, uh, like the type of trucks I used, um, trying to get cheap trucks that just break down, not taking care of my trucks like I should, not having the proper equipment to operate, you know, had times where I didn't screw my tire off uh, and it literally, uh, I was on the highway, my, my tire literally rolled off on the highway. Just doing dumb stuff, man, just not paying attention, being just- Did it, did it hit anybody? Is everything okay? No, thank God it didn't hit nobody, man. People were looking and stopping and stuff. I was just like, oh, man. <laughs> like that, man. It just happened and I was thinking it only happened to me. I'm like, man, I'm just, this ain't me. I can't do this, man. I ain't got what it take. But honestly, I talked to other entrepreneurs and they all they all go through it. And yeah. that's what it, that's the good part about it, knowing like, man, you ain't alone. It's a battle, man. It's a struggle to get to where you want to get. But you know, I learned that from the Marine Corps, man, like going through a boot camp, man. And the harder it is, man, pain is weakness leaving the body, man. That's like my motto, man. Like, and that's so true. On the other side of that, man, that's everything you desire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this is beautiful. Getting back to your comment about, you know, uh, 
you know, having other entrepreneurs to go through it and whatnot and hearing their stories. That's the beautiful thing about YouTube is that we can all like, you know, did you have anybody when you were younger, like other entrepreneur friends to talk to? Oh. Uh, probably not when I, I didn't really know too many entrepreneurs like who were doing on a bigger, higher level when I was younger. My dad's a he's like a he's a disabled veteran and uh, he worked in like social work and stuff like that. Right. And um, so I didn't really have too many entrepreneurs to look to except just like on TV, of course. Um, but now, man, now you're talking about celebrity or just regular entrepreneurs? No, no, no. Just like regular friends, you know. Yeah. A lot of my friends, man, a lot the friends I had who I grew up with who was entrepreneurs, they weren't they weren't selling uh <laughs> let's just say they weren't selling things that you're supposed to be selling. <laughs> <laughs> the true entrepreneurs. <laughs> the real They'll make a killing if they just went legit though, you know. I know. So, I know. <laughs> so uncle, true, eh? It's so true. Yeah, yeah. I forgot my uncle, man. He went end up going to prison, but I mean he was one of the I mean he could have been he had clubs, he had studios. So yeah. So probably my uncle. There you go. <laughs> now that I think about it. <laughs> Uh, so, unless you asked quickly how many bins uh, Vegan Fit answered you, it was 20. Yes. Right. So, and then uh, let's see. Next is Gil saying, Hey, thanks for putting or recording another awesome event for learning, helping all of us to get to the next level. Hopefully, that's what this is all about, guys. Ask your questions. I mean, Martin's a busy guy. You've got him here. Ask him any questions that you need to. And this guy's really open with his questions. With his business and whatnot, his tactics is great to see. Yeah, yeah. Gen X, thanks for joining us. Everybody's saying hi to him on this one. Fantastic. Yeah. Excellent. Now I know why Daniel and Jose work together as a partner, a partnership, because doing these live streams and looking at this and then talking to you is like, you know, daunting at times. Holy mackerel. <laughs> I want to make sure I get everybody. So, awesome. non nonetheless, let's move on. Ah, what What is unique about your business? What's I mean, the competition. What you said? What was, what was the last part you asked? What's unique about your business and kind of like what what is it that separates you from the competition? Well, what's unique about my business is uh, I offer most of the dumpster rental companies in my city. They offer more long term rentals, and we got some short term rentals, three days. But uh, I haven't, I didn't see anybody doing a one day rental. So what I did was I started marketing the one day rental, and nice. I think the reason why I was getting so many calls on Craigslist because. I had one day rental, $200. And if you look in my city or any city in America or Canada, I mean, dumpster rentals for a 10 yarder, it can go anywhere from 260 to 300. I see people just, the bigger companies charge so much. So I get a lot of calls off of that, but that was for my, my one day rental. So my one day rental is my sweet spot. And people are trying to copy me now, but that's something that made me really stand out for my competition. And, uh, I think another thing is just my discounts. I try to do veteran discounts, uh, teacher discounts, uh, first responder discounts. I'll suggest doing that if you can afford it. It'll get you a lot because most of, a lot of times, like, man, I only called you because you not only a veteran owned company, but you give discounts to veterans or se and seniors and teachers and, you know, first responders. And people really appreciate that. And of course, they want to save money. So, you know. Why not take? Why not uh offer that? And now, and I appreciate those people as well too. So, no, yeah. and that's smart market on your behalf, and you know, giving back like that as well, helping them out. That's that's really nice. That's very really good. Very really good. Ryan's got a question for you. Uh, we pay waste management at our business. Do you also do longer day rentals? So we don't do like uh, we don't do. We try not to go anywhere over seven to ten days. Uh, waste management is more so. They got. 15 to 30 day rental. So we, we try to stay out of that. And it's kind of hard to do that. Uh, when you have under a hundred dumpsters, having under a hundred dumpsters, it's really hard to do those 30 day rentals and, uh, those six month rentals. I had customer, I had a guy who called me one time and he was going to pay me. I, I almost did it, but I was like, I, I can't really do it, but he just wanted continual dumpsters and he was going to pay me like $3,000 a month, but it was going to be like a six month ordeal. And it really just didn't make sense for me because it would have tied me up. So I don't do right now the longer term rentals, but um, that's only because I only have a limited amount of dumpsters. But once I get if I do decide to go over that 100 to 200 dumpsters, that's when I'll do the 30 day and uh, six to six month or even a year long rentals. Um, but, yeah, not at this time. 
Good answer. Great answer. Gil, has got another question for you. I mean, sir, a question for you. Send them over, guys. Love these questions. Keep them flying. This is good. <laughs> How many ventures did you start and stop until you found one that actually worked? So my, my first business, when I quit my job, I did a commercial cleaning. I had a, I was cleaning a dealership. I was cleaning uh, baby uh, daycares. And um, the reason why I got out of that, because for some reason, they felt like they didn't have to pay you. And then you had to wait 90 days to get paid. So oh, beautiful. <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> it didn't work out for me, man. And then I found myself having to beg for the money that I earned. Yeah. So I was like, you know, this is a good business, pretty good business. But because I know how to talk and get the contracts. So I kind of got buried out of there. And then I went to uh, house cleaning, which was good for me. I got a big contract with a, the biggest company in America. Uh, America Homes for Rent. They have more houses than anybody else in America. Uh, the owner, he owns public storage and um, nice houses too, all in the suburbs. They had like 4,000 houses here in Columbus. I got a contract uh, doing all their move out, clean outs, junk removal. I got into carpet cleaning for them. Just about everything you could think of, pressure washing. And uh, that took me to another level. But um, yeah, but the dumpster rental, I just loved it because with all those other companies, I needed employees. And if you ever had if you ever had more than five employees, then you know, man, how stressful that can get just because if you hire the wrong people, especially doing, you know, lower labor jobs, man, they, they will quit on you. The turnover is pretty high. So I just dumpster rental was my sweet spot because I could do it myself. It wasn't as pressing on my body. And um, it just fit my personality um, at that time. Good. Good for you. All right, Dave's got another question. Man, this Dave guy, where he comes yeah. from? <laughs> course, man. <laughs> Bye. Where do you keep them all? I saw in the video you have them at some yard. Do you own or lease to land where you? So I got uh, how much are the dumpsters to buy? So it varies. My first dumpster that I ever bought was eleven hundred dollars off offer up, and it was the dumpster. It was a fifteen yard dumpster that I that was on wheels. And the good thing about that man is that. I did, I did some test marketing and I actually re I bought it and then I rented it out the next day. So I kind of at 1100, I rented it out for 270 the next day. So I kind of got that back. Um, so that was 1100, but it varies. Uh, I'll say expect if you want to build it, expect between a thousand to 3000. If you go to roll off route or roll off dumpster, it can go up to 15,000. Um, I keep them at a, I keep them out at a yard. I currently lease it. I have like a big, Plot of land. That's where I shoot most of my videos. I'll be at my yard. Um, it's secluded. I don't get bothered. I pay. I got a really, really fair rate. And um, I'm just out the way. And uh, yeah, so I do lease that land at currently. But I am looking to um, start my own, get my own units, my own storage unit or my own yard. And, uh, you know, not only have my dumpsters there, but rent it out to other uh, uh, companies as well. Once I uh, find the right plot of land here in my city. Yeah, great expansion. Yeah. Great expansion idea. Okay, let's got a comment here as well. I think waste management would eventually be good as those guys have long-term contracts, so money comes in extremely regularly, but uh, but you definitely need more bins first, that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I know, like I said, I know companies here in Columbus, I couldn't believe it, man. I talked to the owner of a, a company here, they had a highway contract doing 70 grand a week. You know, what I mean, it was a lot of work, continuous, and they had the Porter Johns and all this stuff. So uh, it's a lot of money. But the only thing about the contracts is, and, and definitely upfront before you, if you get, if you go that route, it's a really good route, very lucrative. But just look and see how long you're paid. You're gonna have to wait to get paid because sometimes you have to wait 30 days, 60 or 90 days. So if you got money in arrears, you know, then go ahead and do that. But look at it like this. Every time you pick up the dumpster, you got to pay to dump that. So if you're waiting 30 days for your money, 60 days for your money, just make sure you got enough money saved up to take care of that. So just it's a give or take, but it's all about uh, what what you want to do and what fits you and what type of money you're working with. Yeah, there's nothing worse. I mean, than cash flow. I mean, lack of cash flow, like outstanding AR in your business. Oh, like, man. Receivable. oh man, it's just like, give me a break. <laughs> And here's Ryan saying, oh, collecting money can be tough, uh, yeah. especially the summer time in Florida. He's been pressing customers on collections this week. 
I mean, <laughs> it's ridiculous. I have to hire people to phone them up, our clients, to remind them to pay. Oh, the yeah. that they purchased, you know, 45, 60 days ago. It's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Man, and, and, and I was in that, I was, I was, it wasn't with the dumpster rentals. I do with my business, with the, with my business, with the dumpsters I do now, I get paid at drop off. So once I drop the dumpster off, that's when payment. And I make that clear up front to them while yeah, we're sure. up and booking it. So I don't do that anymore because, you know, and when I did do that, a lot of times uh, I got stiff. So yeah. <laughs> that's how everybody's like that, but just be very careful and make sure you just communicate that up front with the customer. They'll understand. But just get the money up front. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's fair. You want to create a win-win situation, right? I mean, it's going to be fair to you as well, right? So, absolutely, definitely. Um, what are your responsibilities being the business owner? Uh, so I own and operate it. Um, I do all the day-to-day. -day. I do have a, I do have people who kind of. I do have a, a company who takes care of the taxes and stuff like that. And um, I do. I had somebody working with the phones, but. Uh, they just couldn't close like I wanted them to close. So for now, I'm pretty much wearing every hat except like uh, just like all the books, even though I know some I know how to do accounting, but uh, just everything but my accounting. But I do all the drop offs, pickups, all my marketing and everything like that. And it's kind of getting to the point where it's getting overwhelming. So that's why I'm looking for people. But I, I'm, I'm not in no rush because I got to find a person who really wants to grow it and who has the same mentality that I have. So yeah, it's a kind of like where it's at. So you use the services of a professional accounting firm? Well, yeah, I got somebody to keep my book. I got an accountant who just keeps my books and everything like that. Make sure okay. keep track of my spending, you know, cause that's yeah. a little tough. I had issues in the past with keeping up with my stuff, man. So <laughs> had to tighten it up. And that was the I'm talking about, like just not having my stuff in order. Had to learn the hard way. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough to do everything. I mean, you know, find the services of the accountant, the bookkeeper, even an attorney as well. I mean, that oh, yeah. makes life easier for you, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Definitely. Um, you ever had to turn down a client? Oh, man. Yeah, absolutely. I, I turn down a client almost every day. Um, <laughs> honestly. Well, hey, hang on. Let's, no, no. let's hear the reasons. The list of reasons. Because the type of debris they have, that's mainly the only reason. Um, now, when I first started out, I used to haul the concrete, uh, the roof shingles. I do some roof shingles, nothing over 20 square, 15, 20 square uh, dirt. I mean, this stuff is just too much. It's too heavy and it's not meant for the type of dumpsters I have. So I'm better off just not even touching that stuff. I, every time I had a guy, he put he filled my dumpster up with dirt. I hooked it up on the back of my truck. When I first started out, my truck was hitting the ground. That's how heavy it was. Nice. But we had to scoop a lot of it out. But even when I took it to the dump, it was still like 10,000 pounds in there. And I had to pay almost 300 bucks. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I just, I turned down customers who have just those type of, type of uh, debris items. And that's pretty much all that I turned down for yeah. the most part. Got it. Got it. Yeah, guys, everybody see that people are uh, connecting with Martin here in his channel. Great to see, please. And everybody, you know, everybody else that's within the stream here as well, please make sure to go check out everybody else's channels. Uh, you know, we're a one big family here as well. If everybody, hey, if you guys can uh, share this video, this live stream out, that'd be great. Maybe we'll get some more people in the future as well. Uh, greatly appreciate it all around. Definitely. So let's see. Les got a point here, Mr. Calgary. Last any snow in Calgary today? It was 18 <laughs> beautiful, glorious degrees here. Let's oh. see. Ah. The point about collecting. That's always annoying. Yep, so true. That's always a way to make the first one is the closet. I'm not sure what the standard is in the industry. It varies. Uh, and in my location, um, I, wrote, I wrote this. I'm writing another book about it, too, just giving a lot more details. But I'm talking about how I came up with my pricing list. I basically just, uh, I made a spreadsheet, an Excel sheet, and I just looked on Google and I got a list of just about every dumpster rental company in my city. And depending on, and do this for whatever type of company you have. And I just made a list. I got all their prices and I kind of just averaged them out and I didn't go too low and I didn't go too high. I kind of came in like that sweet spot where I know people will be like, they're getting a good deal. And that's kind of like how I came up with my pricing. Um, it worked for me, 
because a lot of times people call me, they'd be like, man, that's man, this other company, you know, because they call the people who's first on who's on the first page of Google, the first person. And they're typically the bigger roll off companies who's charging three hundred dollars for a 10 yard. And I'm charging two hundred and twenty dollars for a 10 yard. So right. they see that value. But um, and it's not the lowest. It's people like at 200, 210 and stuff like that. But um, so, yeah, that's uh, pretty much standard for me. But just make a list of all your all the businesses doing what you're doing and just come up with an average price of that. Um, don't be too low. Uh, starting out, if you ain't getting any business, kind of go at that lowest price to see how the market, what the market is screaming out to you. And um, and just kind of take it from there. But pricing is a little tough if it's, you know, it just varies on dump fees in your city. Our dump fees are cheap. Our dump fees are thirty nine dollars a ton. I talked to a guy in New York. His dump fees were like over a hundred something a ton. I was like, man, I don't know how. Wow. Y'all can do that, man. It, I'm like, you got to charge the customers that that extra fee. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm pretty sort of used to it because you, you can't make any money paying that much at the dump. So, just kind of wow. one of the different so, factors. Do you, know, do you know of a company called One Eight Hundred Got Junk? Yeah, I know about One Eight Hundred Got Junk. Yeah, Ryan Schoolmore's company. They're based out in BC. So he had, I had a really good friend that was, you know, Brian's right hand man for the, uh, um, the starting first few years. And he was saying that they expanded into Manhattan, into New York. And yeah. they really, it was the most challenging territory for their franchisees. Because it was so so much. expensive, right? It's just so expensive. They almost had to site your restructure from what I understood and yeah. allow the employees to take as much as they could home or, or, or resell it instead of dumping it because the fees were so high. Ridiculous, man. I mean, I, I probably wouldn't. I, in New York, I don't even know if I would be be doing uh, dumpster rentals just because. Yeah, it just got to charge a lot. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Jason, great to see you. Thank you very much for joining us. Great to have you on board here. So, all right. So, somebody. Oh, hang on. Calgary snow two days ago. Sorry, lad. <laughs> Sorry about that. No snow, man. No oh, time. Wow. Here we go. The winter is slowly coming upon us. Get ready, Martin. It's going to start happening. Get that salt in your bin. Um, it's inevitable. <laughs> it's inevitable. It's just a challenge. It's going to happen. All right. So you just actually made gave some great advice just then. But if you were to give one bit of advice to anyone wanting to start out in your industry, what would it be? The greatest bit of advice you can give them. The greatest bit of advice I would say is just change your mind. I think mindset, man. And with any business, it's all about mindset and uh, researching, um, not overly researching because sometimes people can overly research. You could have a dream in your mind. And then once you look it up, you'll end up seeing people who hate that business and then they'll discourage you. So just don't overly research, but just every piece of information you get with the dumpster rental business, take steps towards it. So be looking for dumpsters every day. Be looking how to buy dumpsters. Be looking at content on YouTube about dumpsters or whatever industry you're in. So just constantly just changing your mindset to prepare yourself and um, researching. But instead of just looking and reading, every time you research, take steps to make it tangible, you know, uh, you know, to, to make it really come true and everything like that. And that's probably just about about it. And everything else will just basically fall in place once you just get that foundation with your mind. And that's what everything is all about. And entrepreneurship, it's all mental, I believe. Because uh, if you can overcome that, what's in your mind, man, then you pretty much, you can overcome it all. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> so it's, you're right. You're that was bang on. Bang on, buddy. Holy mackerel. Bang on. All right. So how many miles are you away from the Canadian border? Ah, man, I, I'm in Columbus, so I'm probably, so we're about, take about three hours to get to Detroit. I got, my uncle, he lived in Detroit. I got family in Detroit. Uh, so I would say about, hmm, probably about three to 400 miles. Yeah, yeah, more or less. Good. Okay, so I got some Canadian trivia for you. Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> And anybody, these are some, if you've seen from earlier streams, some of these are repeat questions. Can't uh -huh. think of a, a country, so hey, but no. Um, let's see if anybody, feel free, throw down your answer, okay? I'm going to throw in a few blanks, all right? Basketball team, the Toronto Raptors. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. So, was the Vancouver 
Uh, Grizzlies. <laughs> Where are they now? They're in Memphis. Right. Who else on the live stream right now is in Memphis? You're not gonna. I don't think you'll know this one. <laughs> Where's Jose? <laughs> one more time. Jose's in Memphis. You said who's in Memphis now? Yeah. No. No. Jose is in Memphis. One of the one of the uh, our uh, team members here on the stream is in in Memphis. What is uh, Canada's, Canada's official sport? Is you said Canada's official hockey? Nope. Basketball? Mm -mm. Our official sport. You said Anybody? artificial sports. Our official sport. Mm. I, I mean, I would think hockey, ice hockey, fishing. Fish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Hunting? No, nah, hunting is it hunting is a sport. I mean, I, I would think hockey or basketball, honestly. Victor, baseball. Let's see. Hang on. This is, I love this question because not many people actually get it. Ryan's saying it should be hockey. Yep. Water polo. Daniel, water polo. Nice one. Oh, they, wow. Not curling. That's right. <laughs> um, it is. Oh, Daniel's fast with the Raptors. Um, our official sport is lacrosse. Oh wow! <laughs> Not water polo or fishing. Thanks. <laughs> That's good to know. All right, couple more quick quick questions. I'm gonna go back to the uh, business questions. Do we have a one dollar bill? Yes or no? Yes. No, we don't. Oh wow! We have we have a coin called a loony. Oh, I should have brought some down. I don't think I have anywhere. I'll oh, wow. I didn't know that. Do we have a two dollar bill? I'll say yes. <laughs> Our first dollar bill is a five. We have oh. a loony and a toony for the ones and the twos. Wow. The oldest brewery in North America is. I know you're a beer drinker. You said it after you. The oldest brewery in North America is. Ryan, help him out. What, well, Wiser Man? <laughs> Close. Actually, I, yeah, I don't know if they brew. I, they might brew butt up here, to be honest. Oh, so, man. It's out of Ohio. It's in Columbus. Uh, uh, Throw one out there. Miller? <laughs> no, I don't It is Molson. Molson is North America's oldest brewery in 1786. Oh, wow. I'm oh, I got it. Jason Guy. No way. <laughs> 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 All right, hang on here. So I got to get to Victor. He's throwing out a question for you. We'll get back to Canadian trivia in a second. Victor's got your question here. How do you keep up with marketing and advertisement, getting constant lead and business? I'll just kind of – I used to keep uh, uh, everything in an Excel sheet just when I post. But now I just got a, I got a routine every day. So I wake up, do some reading, and then I post on all my sites, check on my Google and uh, just kind of go from there. Um, kind of got my routine just over the years down packed. So I kind of just do everything in the morning and just post what I got to post on Craigslist and kind of just keeps me uh, steady, steady and ready. <laughs> well, there you go. Anybody throw some more questions, please. We're just having some fun with some Canadian trivia for the time being here and whatnot and seeing how much of Martin knows of his, uh, of his cool, fun, friendly neighbors here. Okay. So, Keeping in, uh, you know, tis the season of Halloween. The ha Halloween term trick or treat was first used where? Less knows this answer. I'll say London. Nope. Uh, trick or treat was first used where? I will tell you right now, it was. A, it's a province in Canada. We do not have states. Quebec. Have Sorry. Is it Quebec? Nope. Ottawa. Ottawa. Nope. It's where Les is from, Calgary, Alberta. Oh, wow. There man, you go. Canada, man. There you go. All right. Ryan's got a question. Do you have any Facebook ads for your business? Um, I did, but I didn't have much. I didn't, I didn't really uh, get the um, results that I liked. So I just took the money and put it more to avenues that gave me more uh, – you know, business. I didn't really, I didn't really uh, do too well. And I did a lot of research. I had really good ads for my dumpster rental business, but for some reason, um, people didn't want to buy dumpsters off of uh, Facebook for me. 
but not saying it won't work for you. Sorry, I was just drinking some coffee. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Great answer. Hopefully that helped you out, Ryan. Uh, let's see. Okay, next question. Who do you admire the most? Who do I admire the most? Yeah. Wow. That's a tough question. You can say pass. Yeah, I'll have to pass on that one. That's a, that's a tough one. Really? Okay. God, God is who okay. I'm going to move. That's locked in the back of your memory. I'm going to get back to that one later on. What do, you, what do you value the most in other people? What I value them, I value the most of just seeing, I, I believe everybody has a, has talent and gifts. I think what I value the most is when people aren't scared to show who they really are. And, you know, just the, everybody you ever meet has something about them that you can't do. You know, it's always, it's something about everybody that everybody, everybody has some. So I love to see when a person really finds what their gift is in life and their purpose. That's just like a, beautiful feeling because all they do is just add value to other people. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Adding value to other people is huge. Ryan, cool point. I do Facebook ads for my dad's mobile marine business and the returns are insane. Weird how it does good for uh for some businesses. And you know what this is true. Like we spoke about this earlier. If you know if it works for certain niches and certain markets, great, but yeah, I haven't heard many success stories from Facebook ads to be honest. Right here. That's, That's good. great to hear that though. That's great. That's why I tried it. <laughs> yeah, nothing venture, nothing gained, right? I try it out. Yeah. So, <laughs> thanks for the comment. Really, really good. Um, let's see. Or yeah, that question about what's the strangest thing you've ever seen in a dumpster <laughs> like that one. <laughs> All right, describe yourself in three words. Here we go. Let's get to know you a bit more. Ah uh, man, driven, persistent, and just uh, encouraging. Good, good. What's your favorite day of the week? My favorite day of the week, probably Thursday. Why? I don't know because it always it's it's about to be Friday. You know, tomorrow's Friday, and like, but it's not Friday, so you still got. And then you got in business, you still got one extra day before you know people. <laughs> That's a great answer. People who work nine to five, man, you notice it's more people who work nine to five than there are entrepreneurs. So it's like an unwind on Friday, and so I like. You know, I guess Thursday. <laughs> yeah, I guess Thursday. I guess Thursday. Do you uh do you work over the weekend sometimes? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I try not to do so much on Sundays, but for sure, if I got to, I will. But um, yeah, absolutely. Whenever, whenever, uh, you know, it, it all it's all about what the type of customer my customers need. I try to just give that good service and let them know. I like uh Fertita. He owns the uh, Houston Rockets. And he said something very inter inter interesting that stuck with me. He said, "Entrepreneurs should never say no." And so, I believe that man. None of I don't when I, when you go to a he said when you go to a hotel and you call down for something, which you hate when they say no. So I, I'll take that to heart and I start using that, and it's been helping me out. But the only thing I do say no to is concrete and dirt. So I, I can't I can't fix that until I get roll off dumpsters, and I can uh, actually uh, you know say yes to that but everything else i try to just say yes to and just try to fulfill the customers because it just makes it better they they love you because i love when people say yes at, at companies when they can help me yeah you're right yes never a problem proceed move forward and whatnot when do you think you're most productive i think i'm uh, probably marketing i love marketing i love i love getting business <laughs> yeah so my business for sure uh just marketing and just getting ears you know getting people to buy in you know and uh want to do business with me. absolutely so when during the day do you think you're most productive are you like a night owl or are you like a morning guy or when I, I like the night man uh so i'm on my, i'll be on my computer and i'm just uh you know i'm just doing all type of stuff i'm finishing up my second book i'm you know, uh, figuring out, watching YouTube videos about Your other people. Book. I'm sorry? Your second book? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You have a book out? Yeah, it's called uh, Eight Steps to a Successful Dumpster Rental Business. Do you have a copy of it in front of you? Can you, is it hard? Is it hard no, to copy? A copy for this one. It's on uh, Amazon. It's an ebook. It's like 10 bucks, but I got my second one coming out 
and it's uh, eight steps to a, a million dollar dumpster rental business. And that'll be a hard copy. And I'll be coming out sometime this year and still wrapping up the, the final touches to it. That is fantastic. Good for you. Can you put that in the comments right now? Just put the title of your first book in the comments right now. If anybody wants to go and check it out, it's on Amazon. Would you say 800 bucks was it or 80? Oh no, uh, uh, nine nine dollars and ninety nine, ten dollars. That's even a better deal. That's amazing. Oh, really good deal. <laughs> yeah, guys, check out Martin's book. That's cool. That's great. And Brian, cool, co great comment. It's so true. <laughs> Entrepreneurs work eighty hours a week, so you don't have to work forty. It's so true. <laughs> Who's kidding? Who? <laughs> and Gen X, hang on. That's. Yeah, canines over coffee saying it's a green as well. So true. Dave's as always laughing. <laughs> Facebook ads. And oh, okay. That is done there. That'd be awesome. Do a t shirt. Yeah. Gen X, do a t shirt. That's a good one. Let's see. Daniel saying, you see, you're making a million. A million with the sorry you making yeah yeah your gross sales you're making a million daniel wants to know there you go <laughs> if you're well, making yeah, a million I'm, you're close. I'm i'm super duper close but the only thing uh once you, once i get to that level i gotta you gotta hire you i'm have to i gotta hire you gotta hire out you know i mean i need a at least one more person to really um maximize on that but uh yeah it's pretty much it's pretty much uh it's pretty much intact especially just with other stuff I do. Uh, but, but yeah, it's getting there, uh, especially with more scaling and everything like that. That is awesome. Love hearing these stories. Good for you. Awesome, really, really, huge accomplishment. You hit that level. Huge accomplishment. Oh, Victor, Victor close like second here with Dave and the questions tonight. He's got a question for you. Yes, I did. I actually uh, funded it with uh, my last amount of money. Like I said, I did a market search. I uh, put a Craigslist ad out before I had any dumpsters. Right. And I was steady looking for dumpsters to buy. I found one the next day uh, on offer up for eleven $1 hundred dollars. I bought that dumpster. I rented out the next day and I never looked back after that. Um, so, yeah, I did. I used my own cash to start it. Um, but it took a lot. You know, it wasn't just something, you know, where, uh, you know, I. Uh, just happened overnight. I had to save everything and fix fix my credit all the way up. So later on, I can, you know, build that up. But initially, it was my own cash. Good for you. Good, best, good, best good. So. <laughs> good for you, Martin. Uh, what's something that you learned in the last week? Something I learned in the last week? Yeah. Uh, a lot. I learned, especially in America with our media, I learned stuff all the, all the time. Um, Something that I learned last week. You asking me some good questions. Sure. <laughs> it's like, it's like uh, I gotta really think because I'm trying to. I learned a lot, and let me see. I got these questions from the previous. You know, I, I, I learned here. something very interesting that I didn't know, and I want to share, but I just can't think of it right now. It'll probably come back to me. <laughs> we'll get back to that. Just feel free to you know throw it out there when you when you remember it. What's one thing that you own that you wish you didn't? What's one thing I own that I wish I didn't? Correct. Uh, I got a I got a Gucci hoodie. I don't really I, don't, I, wore, it, I wore it one time and uh, <laughs> I just you know I was around a lot of people, so it's like with a with a designer hoodie like that you can't really wear it all the time. Like I did, <laughs> uh, like my Seahawks hoodie or like a Nike hoodie. So I guess yeah I didn't I don't really need it. I didn't have to spend all that money on it. <laughs> What's your favorite NFL team? Seahawks. So, I got a lot, man. I'm more of an NBA guy, but um, I like like the Seahawks. I like uh, the Browns, even though they they they're not living up to expectations. Um, I used to like the Bengals, man. I, uh, they're okay. Uh, yeah, like the Seahawks. Yeah, Browns and Bengals. <laughs> You're all over the place. Holy crap, that's cool. All right, Dave's got another question for you. Martin, watch out. I think uh, Dave's up up on you on, this, on the questions for the night. We need some victory. Oh, uh, right, question, questions. I, I'm making, this is some good stuff. Uh, can I tow these with my Pathfinder or do I need a truck? You, I would go with a truck, man, because I started out with uh, one of my newer trucks. I had a 2011 Dodge Ram and 1500 and uh, 
in about a year or so, end up tearing it up. So yeah, you definitely don't want to pull, you know, uh, a metal dumpster. You could probably get away with it for about a couple few weeks, but just I wouldn't suggest pulling uh, anything super heavy. But check your uh, check how much weight is rated for always before you use a truck, and to see how much uh, weight you can pull. And also in America, at least you will have to. Uh, get your trailer uh, weighed before you can get a tag and um, registration. So just make sure um, that whatever you're pulling, it's able to carry that amount of weight. And uh, you'll be able to find that. Just look it up on Google and see how much weight you can pull. But just be careful, man. You don't want to mess up your transmission engine and it's not worth it. <laughs> not worth it. I'm surprised nobody's asked this question for you yet, but is extraordinary your actual last name? No, no, my last name is Woods, <laughs> Martin Woods. Uh, but that's just like my uh, YouTube and my uh, Instagram. I got a Facebook page. I'm, I don't. I use, I'm hardly on Facebook. So if anybody ever look, I, I just. I don't. I don't know why. I just. Thought I got. I'm not into Facebook no more like I used to be. Right. But Instagram and uh, YouTube is like my main platform. So I like extraordinary because you know I want to do extraordinary things, man. No, it's, it's not as. I love it. It's not, I love it. It's not, it's the helpful entrepreneur, but you know, maybe one day <laughs> uh, it's keep it. Yeah. It's a great last name. <laughs> so, yeah, how yeah, many of audio books have you listened to in the last year? Um, I listen to kind of like the same ones. I listen to, I forgot the like. I listen to a lot of consulting uh, audio books. I listen to uh, like uh, Tony Robbins' his new book. Uh, I got it over here too. Um, I like uh, Damon John Rise and Grind. Uh, I, I find just mystery, mysterious books too. And, um, you know, when I'm on audible, when it's, uh, cause it's not, it's no dumpster rental book. So I got to listen to just entrepreneur books. So just anything really, uh, I listen to so many can't even, uh, remember. <laughs> no, it's good. I keep it going. Absolutely. Keep it going. Ryan, uh, Martin is in, I'm in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Bucks. <laughs> use okay. You're making all this uh, computer stuff. Like what? Use sorry. Use one word to describe your computer ability. One word to describe. Uh, still learning. Just two words. Well, learning. You said, <laughs> like, on, you, said, you said one word. You said how many words? I'm sorry. <laughs> one learning. You can use two. I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> oh, geez. Could you? Okay. So could you go a whole week without your smartphone? Yes or no? Honestly, no. And I hate that, man. I feel like I'm getting very addicted. It's something going on nowadays with, with everybody, man. Every, I'm, I see people all the time just with their phone driving and something is going on, man. It's getting very addictive. <laughs> so yeah. probably not. You always gotta stay connected, right? So being an entrepreneur and having customers call, I, yeah, I go out of business. <laughs> Have you ever hurt yourself during work? I mean, I, I mean, yeah, all the time, man. I, I once had, a, I once broke, almost broke my thumb, man. I crushed my nails, my my nail just. I hit my head just really bad on like the ceiling when I used to have my other truck. Yeah, all the time. All the. All the I'm always got nicks and bruises on me, man. It's a lot of it's hard work. <laughs> but yeah, all the time. Imagine, holy mackerel. Ouch. <laughs> holy mackerel. Ryan. Sorry. It'd be dumb stuff. It'd be stuff I, that could have been prevented if I just would have been paying, paying attention a little better. Wear some bubble wrap and a hard hat next time. Yeah, probably should look into that. <laughs> Post it on Instagram tomorrow morning. <laughs> I'm going to have to do that, man. <laughs> All right, Ryan's got a question for you. Okay. Uh, do I think uh, – I, I mean, I think he's a great quarterback, but I feel like with every quarterback especially, I believe that if you look at it all, it all depends on what situation you end up in. You know, like Tom Brady, I mean, we don't know. If he, if he probably wouldn't have went to New England with Belichick, he probably wouldn't have been the greatest of all time. So I believe, man, I don't think he's in a good – um, system because I don't know. I don't know about the Redskins, man. I don't know. I hope so. Cause my guy, my hot, my Buckeye guy, but I really, it's hard to, it's hard to, 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 to guess on quarterbacks, man. It's either hit or miss, man. And he got the tools, but we'll just have to see. Yep. Good luck. Good luck. 
Yeah, Tom Brady. There you go, says Ryan. All right, next question. What's your favorite season of the year? Oh man, my birthday June first, man. So I love, I love summer. I like the spring going into summer like that, like late May, June. You know, uh, I just love that time of the year. Yeah, everybody's unwinding. It's just a, it get get a lot more business. It's not cold and miserable. So yeah, spring went summer going into summer. Yeah, absolutely. Same here. Same here. Uh, you got anything spontaneous lately? Anything spontaneous? Yeah. Every day is spontaneous, but I don't I can't. Uh, not 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 really. Not really. I'm not really a spontaneous type of guy. Uh, no. Not really. You like to plan ahead. <laughs> you said what? You like to plan ahead? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Nothing spontaneous. I'm more, you know, calculated. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what makes you laugh? I don't know, man. Uh. Snapchat, my cu my cousin, one of my best friends, man, and um, we do uh, the filters on Snapchat. If I want to laugh, I'll go on Snapchat and just do the faces or YouTube, man. Those prank videos. I mean, I love to laugh, man. I think it's so fun to laugh. It's the best <laughs> medicine. Oh my gosh, it's yeah. the best medicine. <laughs> so right, the prank videos on YouTube are amazing. Yeah. I mean, on IG, Instagram, you can find funny things, man. I find funny things where I'm not supposed to laugh, too. That's the funniest stuff. <laughs> I think it was Jose or Ryan earlier when we were talking. It was like, you know, you see, you see somebody accidentally fall on ice or, you know, slip and fall or whatnot. You try. I mean, it's not nice to laugh, but, I mean, it just, it's just like the funniest, funny. funniest thing sometimes. You always feel bad afterwards. Like, oh, geez, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time that you laughed out loud? Uh, probably today, man. Like, I'm always laughing. Like, ser I'll be by myself, and, like, I'll see somebody walking funny down the street, and I'll just laugh. Like, man, look at this person. Like, just – and only be, like, funny. It'd just be how they just walking. Just – I don't know, man. I laugh all the time, man. Because I, be, I, I go through a lot of stuff during my day. My days be rough, man, and so I, I be – I'll be having to laugh, man, so I don't really get just ticked off. <laughs> <laughs> That's transparency, man. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so here, we I got something new then for, uh, you know, carrying on the Hangout With series. I'm going to shut up for a while, and everybody else can ask you guys. I mean, sorry, you guys can ask Martin any questions that you guys want. I'm not going to say anything from now on. <laughs> Let's see what people come up with. Oh, Jose is back. And he says, check out the shampoo pranks on YouTube. No kidding. They are hilarious. I need to check those out. I, check those out. I haven't checked out the shampoo pranks. They are they are funniest. They're done in California, I think on Venice Beach. And there's, you know, a prankster is, you know, behind a shower. And he's just like pouring on the guy's head. as he continues to shower over and over and over again. It's so well done. So well done. So, guys, any questions for Martin? Let's go. I'm going to sit back. La, 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 la. So, Martin, let's talk. Well, some questions are coming up. Uh, what do you want to talk about? Oh, man. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you went over a lot, man. Uh, you got some good questions, man. You're a great interviewer, man. I never, you know. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks. I'm very, very good at it, man, because you caught me up a couple times, man. I feel like a politician. And I'm getting, I'm having to duck and move a little bit <laughs> out of my questions. Yeah, bob, and, bob and weave around a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Gen X, no kidding. The garbage, gold, sorry, the gold digger. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, those, I love those too, man. One of my, uh, yeah, yeah, I really, I like those. I do think, yeah, I, I seen a couple ones I thought was fake. I'm like, come on, man. That, but it's a, it's a very, very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because he, she think he got some money. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Especially when the guy gets her in the car, he's like, "No, you know, the car won't start. Why? Because it doesn't start when there's a gold digger in it, and you know, the girl has to get out." It's like, "Oh, she's." <laughs> I got feel. Oh, I just feel feel feel, feel tough for them. So, all right. So Dave's saying Rick is tough. I guess I am. I don't know. I don't think these are yeah. questions. Good man. Hey. I'm trying to keep it, you know, fun and. Uh, you know, bounce it around with some, you know, professional questions. You know, we want to get to know you, 
And we want to get to know your business and you as an entrepreneur and you, you know, personally as well, right? So hopefully I'm talking around with some fun other questions too, you know, a little bit of the lighter side. Oh, so, yeah. all right, Keen Nines over coffee. Here you go. Do you have a specific morning routine? Great question. Uh, just getting up, uh, reading um, and posting my marketing ads. Might do a couple of some push ups uh, just to get my blood flowing. Grab some coffee, you know, get get right, get ready. And um, I mean, get right to it. Yeah, get in there. But really, in there. My morning routine all depends on what I do the night before. You know, um, that's really how prepared I am the night before, because if I don't prepare my night, then my morning will be kind of off. So it's two sided with my morning routine. Uh, so, yeah, what time do you usually get up in the mornings? Ah, man, it varies. I'm not a morning person. I mean, I try I, between six and seven. Uh, the th you know, between that's like my sweet spot, like six and seven earlier when I got a um, because I try not, I don't open till eight, eight thirty. But uh, like I said, the day before, I, if I know I got dumpster rentals, I'll have them already set to get uh, going out. And it just makes it just that much easier. So between six and seven, I'm, I'm not a four to four or five o'clock guy right now. I did that in the military, man. And um, that wasn't that really wasn't my my my, my cup of tea. So. <laughs> I'm done at night. I stay up pretty late, so uh, so I still. Oh, you are. You're a bit of a night owl then, eh? Oh yeah, I get those hours back. Man, I do. I get a lot done between, you know, nine and probably twelve to one. Sometimes I'm up to like about one. You know, so. Yeah. Okay, so you you were saying that you um you did have an answering service for a while, but they couldn't close the deal for you, correct? Yeah, I had a person. I had uh, answering my phones. I had my number being routed to them and myself when I couldn't answer it. Um, they just didn't, uh, really just know I, I, I trained them and everything like that, but they just couldn't really close, you know, yeah. like I would want them to. So we had to, um, go a different route. <laughs> so what do you do now? Do you have your phone? Like you just have it going straight to your business line, go straight to your cell phone, straight and to my cell phone. Uh, if yeah. I'm not there or if I'm about to do something and it seems like I'm gonna be honest, for some reason, it seems like a customer will call me right when I'm about, when I'm jumping off a dumpster and I can't talk to them. So I set up a, a automatic uh, text. So I got like, hi, uh, be right back with you and stuff like that. And I'll just uh, ignore it, but I'll have that text automatically go to them. So they'll know I'm not ignoring them. And, I, and then soon, as soon as I'm done, I get right back to them. Yeah. That can be a little stressful, just answering the phones and trying to go without your day. Because a lot of times you'll get some customers who will give you the runaround and just ask you 20 minutes worth of questions, which is okay. I'm not knocking them. And then uh, we probably won't end, won't end up scheduling anything. But I blame myself for that. <laughs> no, no, tire kickers. We get them all the time, too. Oh, yeah. 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 Don't really want to just, they're probably just calling us to check my prices. I don't know. But. Yeah, maybe. You never know. But, you know, there's like. <laughs> Yeah, it happens all the time in every industry. Our tire kickers. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Ryan, we've got a great question for you. Do you think the Tesla truck will be a, will be good for pulling dumpsters? Man, I actually thought about that, man. Really? As long as long as it's rated to what I got to look at the rating. Um, the GVWR, uh, it's like just the gross weight, how much weight you can pull with the, a certain truck. But yeah, if the rating is good, if it can pull. I try to get trucks that can pull 10 to 15,000 pounds, at least starting out. So anything 2,500, F-250 and above, you want to go that route. But if the Tesla can do, you know, um, 10,000 pounds, can pull that or more, that'll definitely be a good a good thing, man, especially if it's running all on electric. You save a lot of money, man. I do. I got to fill my tank up every day and a half. So, yeah. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whoa. That might be an idea for you to really be seriously looking into, maybe. You never yeah. know. Yeah, I do a lot in gas. Wow. That's uh, that's something. Wow. All right, Dave, why do people even need to talk to you? Can't these questions be answered on the website or be on the website? Uh, why? Sure, but. <laughs> they can, yeah. but a lot of times people want to hear a person. Because they have questions that is that's not always on the web. Even if you have uh, FAQs on there, but a lot of times people either want to talk or text to a human or just a person they think is a human. Because you can have robots doing a lot of that as well. But yeah, it all depends. More of our more of the millennials, I believe, and under they they're more so they'll they'll look online and just straightforward 
or either text. But a lot of people, you know, over that, over that, they want to talk to a person and and solidify it and stuff like that. So it just all depends on, you know, that from from my experience. But you know what, that, that's a Dave. That is actually a really good question. And you know, I thought about that years ago as well. I was like, well, all the questions that most people are asking, I've got in my FAQ sheet. So why do they need to speak to us? But they they do. They still do, right? And and there's sometimes there's these specific questions that you just wouldn't even think about. I mean, you're like, okay, specific to their needs and whatnot. Like, so, can you? Like, I had a customer the, today. Can you take a dumpster through my grass, through the backyard, up a hill, <laughs> with the with the being <laughs> Free. So, you know, like you get questions where people just they won't be able to find the answers. But but yeah, yeah, really, really good question. Yeah, that is a really good question. It's a lot easier to for them to book it online, actually. But Do you have that capability on your website? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, don't, I don't have a FAQ. I have just pages. I have transparent uh, pricing so people can look on my, and see my how much I charge. And that's really what people most of the people want to know how much it's going to cost and uh dimensions and stuff like that so people who call me just they don't want to book online because you can book it online and it comes straight to my email and i'll email you back and we'll set it up but most people just call hmm. wow interesting so dave say, says says <laughs> here's dave <laughs> i don't ever want to involve a human as possible <laughs> uh, yeah. working with having a human employees it's tough man I mean, especially if they don't share your vision, it's tough. I, I understand that completely. That's why I do the dumpster rental business and I just got myself. <laughs> yeah. So, you know what? Hang on. And then that's a good, Dave, that's a really good point. And Ryan here, you know, he's saying to Dave, investing most, you know, sorry, uh, most people I deal with need to talk, deal, you know, will need to deal with a person. And it's like different businesses, right? And different needs and whatnot. It's that's, <laughs> this is such a good conversation because it's so true. Right. Yeah. I've got a business where people don't want to talk to anybody. They just want to, you know, it's the lead leads company and they just want to go straight forward, straight to the website. Bam, bam, bam. They don't, we try and follow up sometimes and they just won't even take our calls. They yeah. rather not talk to anybody. Right. Absolutely. So but yeah. then other businesses I deal with, it's just like, it's all people based. It's all about that relationship, that business relationship moving forward. So, yeah. so question for you, like you can build up these relationships. Do you get reoccurring all the time? Yeah, man, for all the time, man. Um, good. All the time. Got deals. I'm good. Sometimes it won't even be like a. I will have like a few days where it'll be just people I already dealt with, and I save everybody in my phone. I keep, I keep, you know, I just save everybody in my phone, and um, you'll be surprised. I'd be surprised, man, how much I probably do more repeat business than anything else. Really. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times, I get, like I said, I get connected with these house flippers, yeah, and I get attractors to better rates. So uh, I'll just I'll be their go-to guy. So you know, when that winter time come, they still got properties that you know, they, and people still they still working all year round. So I keep them in my pocket, man. So you know, I stay busy during that. That's how I can stay busy during that season. But yeah, that's a great. Good for you. Good for you. What else can you tell us about the business that uh, you know you like to tell everybody here about? that I have not asked a question about from you tonight. <laughs> what would you like to elaborate on or, or tell us? I mean, uh, with the dumpster rental business, I'll just say, man, uh, we already went over the mindset because it's a lot of ups and downs and just willing to learn, man, willing to learn how to, if you're not good with your hands, willing to learn how to change tires, to learn how to do some welding, um, just being open to uh, getting your hands dirty. You're going to be dirty because you're going to be at the landfill where yeah. all the trash in your city goes so just you know prepper prepare yourself just to be the opposite of corporate <laughs> yeah. so how often are you at the landfill set you there like three or four times a day with bins it all depends i used to be it depends on how much dumpsters you got so if i got five rentals and i only got five dumpsters i have to go five times but if you got 20 dumpsters then I have empty ones already. So my yard, I, I my yard is right across the street from the landfill. I purposely did that so I can stage full dumpsters right. and just go out that way. And then when I'm done with all my, I try to, if I got empty dumpsters, I try to get my customers out the way first. And then my, my full ones, I can just go back to back and just, you know, recycle them, 
So that's kind of like how how that works. No, that's a smart tip right there for anybody getting into this business, watching this live stream or the video afterwards. There you go. Get lease some land as close as you can to the landfill site. That makes so much sense. So smart. Changed everything for me, man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Because you can have like bunkers just sitting there half, I mean, full or whatever. Half your stock is ready to go at any time if you want it to be. And you got some downtime for an empty. I mean, that's a uh, yeah, great move on your part. So there you go. That's a great business tip. Really good. So what else? Do you think? I think five more minutes. I got to catch an early flight to Phoenix tomorrow morning, everybody. So five more minutes. If anybody's got any more questions for Martin, please put it down here in the comments. Martin, what else would you like to tell us about yourself or being an entrepreneur, personally, being an entrepreneur or about your business? What else can you tell us? I mean, just, uh, you know, if you want to be an entrepreneur, man, just make sure you're willing and able and you got to you got to just to drive about you, man, because and it's OK. I tell people all the time, man, it's OK if you if you're not an entrepreneur. I think entrepreneur is the cool thing to do now. And everybody is trying to get into it. But then they're fine. Most people I know, they're finding themselves back working for somebody because it's not for everybody. And that's OK, man. People need to understand that because people people are entrepreneurs needs employees to scale and get to the next level. So I just, you know, uh, I just want everybody to know, man, I try to just tell that, man, if entrepreneurs, it's a good thing. It can change your life. It's freedom. It's more money. But to get to that level and to really achieve, you know, the success you want, man, it's a big sacrifice and it's it's not guaranteed. You know, I got people all the time like, man, I need to make this much to pay my rent or stuff. I'm like, hey, I can't guarantee you can't you, you know, guarantee you're going to be able to pay your rent. You know what I'm saying? You might not have no business that time. So just make sure if you want to get into entrepreneurship, make sure you got the right mindset. Make sure uh, you're in it for the long haul and you're not just doing it because it looks cool and, and you can have it on your Instagram like an entrepreneur. Don't do it for those reasons. Do it because you really want to add value to the world. You really want to just be an asset to people and you want to inspire people and everything like that and just make people's lives better. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Ryan, great comment. Thank you so much. Awesome to see what he's been able to build. Glad to have found his channel. Thank hey. you. Man. Appreciate it, Ryan, man. You had some really good questions, bro. <laughs> yeah, and please make sure everybody here, you know. Oh, yeah. was everybody had good, great questions. <laughs> yeah, great, you know, great time tonight, really good time. And Dave, yeah, low capital to get started. He likes that. There you go. I think we're going to be seeing uh, a Denver dumpster company starting up pretty soon. So, uh, Dave, whatever you do, please just, you know, get it down on your uh, on your YouTube channel. We'd love to see you start doing this. It'd be great to watch the uh, the growth of your business next, too. <laughs> so, yeah, getting back to being an entrepreneur, you just, yeah, I, I, it's it's a tough road. It's very doable. It, mm -hmm. I mean, nowadays, as well, it can, it's a, probably, I would say it, it's, it's easier, but I think it's not as as lonely as it used to be or as yeah. challenging because there's so much information out there now. Obviously with all these uh, social media platforms, especially you can connect up with other great people, you mm -hmm. know, so by all means, I mean, but go for it, right? Anybody that you know of this thing about being an entrepreneur, I recommend just go for it and, but you know, create a team around you as well so you can learn as you grow, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So any questions guys? Let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Comments going on here. Here we go. All right, Dave's <laughs> Dave's Denver Dumpsters. Here we go. Get ready for this YouTube channel to start. We're gonna do a search on it later on tonight. Hopefully, it's gonna That's start. Nice name, man. Right I'm sorry. That's a catchy name, man. It's all about the name. <laughs> all about the name. <laughs> Oh, gee, hang on for one sec. Let's see, Victor. Same. Great to see you start a business with your own cash. Thumbs up, Martin. There you, you go. Absolutely. So, yeah, and Dave saying, you know, thanks, Martin. Very interesting. I yeah, well, great having you on board tonight, buddy. This has been a, a great time talking to you. It's and, an honor. Yeah, Absolutely. Creeping up to two hours. Holy mackerel. And again, you know, I want to do these yearly recaps. You know, we'll do another one, we'll do an update with you in a year's time and see how far you've progressed and grown. Absolutely. I really, I, I will appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Absolutely. So, all right, guys. Ryan saying, have a great night, uh, Victor, and probably hopefully everybody else as well. So, guys, everybody's been part of this stream. 
Thank you so much. Thanks for all the comments tonight, the questions. Really cool. By all means, like, get in contact with Martin. If you have any questions in the future, you now you guys know where to reach him, okay? Thanks once again, guys. Have a great night. Have a good one, y'all. Appreciate y'all. Thanks, guys.